Good morning, church. Today I'm going to walk you through Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 through 20. Let's go ahead and read it. It says, Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Now, I know what you're thinking if you're watching this with your kids. Your kids are just turning their heads to you and they're saying, Mom, look, the Bible says we don't have to wash our hands before we eat because Jesus' followers didn't wash their hands before they eat. Hang on a second. Let me just explain what this is going on. Okay, so if you keep reading in some of the other passages in the New Testament, you'll find out that the Pharisees had a tradition that said they had to wash their hands a specific way before they ate their food. Now, this is coronavirus time, and so you're probably washing your hands a little bit differently than you usually wash your hands. And uh, maybe you're doing it for a whole 20 seconds, maybe even remember the song that I taught you last week. But with all that said, uh, Jesus is not talking about cleanliness here. He is going to be talking about something that is uh, ritual cleanliness. The Pharisees thought that in order to obey God properly, you had to wash your hands a specific way. And Jesus never made his disciples do that. So Jesus replies, And so why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus, you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. Now, let me explain this one. So there was this other tradition the Pharisees had that even though in the Ten Commandments it says honor your father and mother, uh, in the tradition of the Pharisees, there was a particular thing you could do. You could take your wealth and you could put it into a trust that would be paid out to God on your death. It was called declaring something Corban or holy or dedicated to God. And so if you took that wealth and you put it in trust for uh, the day after your death, and then it would go into the temple, then you no longer had any obligations with regard to that money. You could use that money for your own purposes uh, in many ways, but you didn't have any obligations with that money. So if I took all of my wealth and said it was Corbin, then I could continue to use it to live off of. But if someone said, hey, I really need some help, I didn't have any obligation to help that other person out especially not even my father or my mother. This is what the Pharisees were doing. And Jesus said, wait a minute, you are nullifying the word of God for the sake of your tradition. Then he goes on, he says, you hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Now, Jesus quotes Isaiah here, and the sad thing is that what Isaiah says is true about all humans at all times. We have a very strong tendency to obey without our hearts being in it, a very strong tendency to do what is right without actually caring about it. This is the little child who says to mom and dad, okay, fine, I'll do it, but I don't have to like it. This is a religious person saying, sure, I'll do it, but I don't need to put my heart into it. You see, there's this idea that we have that what God cares about is our literal behavior. And that what he cares about is that our behavior lines up with his specific requirements. And Jesus right here in this passage quotes an Old Testament prophet to say, God cares about what's in your heart, not just what you say, not just what you do. Sure, there are behaviors you should do. Like, frankly, I think you should wash your hands. I think you should wash your hands quite a bit right now, as do many other people. I mean, right now you are staying in your home. You're probably staying in your home partially because the government has told you to. And maybe you're obeying just because someone told you to. And you don't have to like it, but you're doing it. 
This is a tendency all of us have. But let's see what Jesus says next. Jesus calls the crowd to him and says, listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that's what defiles them. That confused the disciples. So the disciples come up to him and they say, wait a minute, don't you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? Jesus replied, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They're blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Okay, so this is just Jesus saying, okay, I'm not worried about what the Pharisees think because the Pharisees aren't really part of the garden. The Pharisees have flown in from outside of the garden and they're pretending to be in the garden by doing behaviors. Interesting. So then Peter says, Jesus, explain the parable to us. Jesus says, are you so dull? Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. Okay, there's Jesus again saying that you don't really need to wash your hands. Uh, that's not his point. Remember, Jesus' point here is to draw a distinction between the heart and the other behaviors of life. He says murder, adultery, sexual immorality, these are things that we think of as behaviors. Theft, false testimony, slander, these are things that we think of as behaviors. But Jesus says they're thoughts. They're evil thoughts. They come from your heart. Listen, right now all of us are in a phase of life where we have to obey. We have to stay in our homes. We have to not go out and do the things that we would ordinarily want to do. We have to restrict ourselves in many ways. And you might think of this as a behavior. Well, I'll do it, but I don't have to like it. Maybe it's a spiritual thing for you, a religious thing for you. Uh, we've been asking you to maintain your donations to the church. That's a, that's a rough thing, especially when everybody's financial circumstances are kind of uncertain right now. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a big responsibility. And so maybe for you, it's, okay, fine, I'll do it, but I don't have to like it. Maybe it's reading your Bible. Okay, fine, I'll do it, but I don't have to like it. I want to help you understand something. What Jesus is saying is that he wants your heart. And if he gets your behavior and doesn't get your heart, he didn't get your behavior either. The behavior of following Jesus, the behavior of living a holy life, is behavior that has to be linked to the heart or it doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't count. The Pharisees had all the behaviors, but Jesus said they were weeds in God's garden. Let me give you one point of application today. Just one tiny coronavirus application. Today, as you are going through the boredom of your day, you're staying at home, you're not doing the things you wanna do, I wanna remind you to embrace this moment with your heart. There is a reason God has you in your home with your family. Embrace it. There's a reason God has you home alone. Embrace it. One of those reasons is that he wants to do something in you so that your heart is more in tune with him. Another reason he has you at home is that he wants to use your life to serve others. Do you realize that every single day you are in your home is one more day that a nurse at the hospital doesn't have to see a sick person? Or one more person that nurse doesn't have to see? One more day of you being in your home is one more day that that ventilator is not being used for you. One more day in your home is one more day for someone else to get cared for. I just want to encourage you that every single moment of your own boredom or frustration in the midst of this process is a moment where you are serving someone else. So thank you for your service. Thank you for being diligent. 
And let's be the kind of people who serve other people first. Because it's out of the heart that all the evil thoughts come. And it's out of the heart that all the good ones do too. Thanks for being with me today. Let me pray for you. Our Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would move in our lives today. Help us to be people who put the heart first, put you first, and from the heart are a blessing to the people around us rather than putting undue burdens on them, rather than viewing our own life as just a string of behaviors. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be people who love you, who love others, and who care in a way that makes a real difference in this world. Thanks for giving us today. Let us use it for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for being with me today. God bless you. Have a good day.